This lesson is going to be a quick overview on Google Apps Script and how you can get started writing some code with Google Apps Script. This is the Google Apps Script editor that's online running through some of the different menu options here within the dashboard. How you can write some code, write called JavaScript code, run the functions directly within the editor in order to see the results in the execution log. So that's all coming up in this lesson. You will need to have a Google account in order to access the Google Workspace and also run and create Google Apps Script. If you don't have a Google account, you can go over to accounts.google.com and sign up for a free account. You can also use organizational accounts. So there are slight differences within the settings when you are sharing content, but the Apps Script and the Google Workspace will function the same way. So go ahead and log into your Google account. Google Apps Script can be created and run directly within the browser. So there's nothing to download and you can access it once you log into your Google account. The browser that I am using and the preferred browser in order to interact with the Google Workspace is the Chrome browser. So go on over to script.google.com and this is going to be where the main Apps Script dashboard is going to be, where you can view and search your existing projects. You can get help in setting up projects. And this is going to be providing a list of starred projects. So if you provide a star or access a project that you want to highlight, that's going to show up in the starred projects. There's also the My Projects, all the projects, projects that have been shared. There's projects that have been deleted. And then there's also the automation where we've got the triggers and the different executions. So this gives you some logging information about what's been going on with your Google Apps Script content. It'll provide you different error rates and code that has been run. There's also a getting started. So this is, provides you a link for a quick guide to get started with Google Apps Script. There's also some sheet add-ons, doc add-ons, forum mods, slides add-ons, and Gmail add-ons that you can click and start quickly with Google Apps Script. There are two different ways to create Google Apps Script. And so one of them would be a standalone project. You can create a standalone project by going over to the script dashboard, selecting the new project in the top left-hand corner. This is gonna open the Google Editor. I'm gonna make the browser window bigger so that we can see the tabs. This is the development environment where you can access your existing scripts as well as create brand new scripts. You can give the project a name, and this should be a meaningful name that you can reference when you want to open the project back up. The main interface is going to be within the scripting editor. There's also an overview, which is going to give you details about the project. There's the triggers. So these are the automations that are running within the project. There's the different executions. So that will give you a listing of all of the executions that have happened. If you are experiencing any errors, you can filter through them and you can check to see any issues that you might be having with the script as it's running. There's also at the bottom, the project settings. So these are just the general settings that allow you to write the Google Apps script. And for most of your projects, you can just keep them as the default. And we are going to be exploring this in a little bit more detail later on. So going back to the script editor, the next menu provides you an option to select files. You can have multiple files within your Google Apps Script. They can either be script or HTML files. And then as you create them, you can give them names. So all of these will be part of the same project and all of the code will be linked together. So you're able to access any one of the files from within the other files. There's also an option to bring libraries in. And a library is a script project whose functions can be re reused in other projects. If you want to add an existing library, so if you already have a project and you want to bring the code from that project into your new project, you can add the library. It's going to require a script ID. And so every project, whenever you are creating it, you're going to have a separate unique script ID. And this is how you can access the library and bring the library into the project. And of course, we're gonna be covering more of this later on. Best practices when you are creating a script in your library, make sure that it ha does have a meaningful name. Also within the scripts, if you have multiple GS files, make sure that they have unique names. In addition to libraries, you can bring in Google services directly into the application to provide more power. And there's a number of API services that you can link to your code and then use that service within your project, such as YouTube, 
There's also a task manager. There's the different group settings, different Google suite of products, and a number of other useful APIs that you can utilize within your script. And bringing these API services will provide you more functions. The default application will open up with a function called my function, and it is suggested the best practice is to rename this function into a more meaningful name. I'm going to call it test script one. And within the function, this is where you write the code. The code editor will provide you suggestions as you're typing the code. If you want to open up the suggestion, you can select the read more, and this will give you more information about the code that we're writing in the syntax that we're using it in the app editor. The log can be used to help diagnose any information as you're creating your code. Also can be used for error reporting. The log is a lightweight stream in real time. You can use either the logger or console to output content into the log. And to write directly into the log, there's a method where we can either clear, get log, or log the content. And I'm gonna to select to log, and it's expecting a value as a string value that's gonna be logged into the log when we want to run the code. In order to execute the code, there's a run and a debug. The difference between the run and the debug is that the debugger will run the debugging screen in addition to executing the application script and run will just execute the function. In the dropdown on the right hand side of the run and the debug, this is where you can select the function that you want to execute. If we have multiple functions, that dropdown is going to contain all of the functions that we have in our app script. And this way we can select and execute the code. This is the execution log that's running. And because we've opened up the logger, it's going to display the log information that we've output into the execution log. And that's coming from the function that we've just invoked. And running it with the debug opens up the debugger. On the right-hand side, this is the way that you can debug your application within the editor. The code that we're writing is going to be similar to JavaScript where we can set variables. We can have different variable types, such as strings. We can also have numbers, different data types, such as booleans, which are either true or false, and they're written without the quotes, the same as the numbers. We also can contain arrays, which can contain multiple values, and they can be different varying data types. There's also objects, setting the property name, and then the value that's associated with the property. Just like with JavaScript, we can have conditions and run code on the conditional statements. We can also use the array methods. And when we start typing, because this is an array, it's provide us with the array methods that we might want to use at a string value of three. We can also loop through the arrays using the array methods, just as we do with JavaScript. And again, log out the content to see the value of the item within the array. And now when we run the script, it will output all of this content into the execution log. You can also use for loops. So setting up a loop and outputting within the log. And so that will run the code. And so in, this, in addition to the JavaScript, there's a number of built-in methods that are used within Google Apps Script to provide even more functionality. Open up the editor, write some code. You can write some JavaScript code, run the functions to get more familiar with what you can do with Google Apps Script.